صحبت بکنی یکی که خودش آن میاد بکنه من عرض دیگه ندارم خانم حیاتی ما در خدمت تو هستیم اگر آمادگی داری بله چند لحظه خواهیم دکتر شکوه امکان داره شما لطفا خودتون رو معرفی کنید فکر کنم خودتون بگین خیلی بهتر انقدر زیاده تخصصتون و اکسپریانستون که فکر کنم اگه من بخوام توضیح بدم نیم ساعت طول بکرشه اشکال نداره عزیزم حتما من مهندسی پتروشیمی رو از پولیتکنیک گرفتم سال 63 فوق لیسانس دانشگاه تهران دانشگاه مهندسی شیمی رو گرفتم بعد در صنایع پتروشیمی کار کردم ایران تو صنایع راندازی و کارهای پروژه ها و همچنین آپریشن بودم بعد برای دکترا در دانشگاه در شهر مونترال دکترای مهندسی شیمی رشته مهندسی فرایند پلیمر ها و کامپوزیت ها را گرفتم و در صنایع به اصطلاح سکتورایی که کار کردم بیشترش مربوط به صنایع پلیمر هست و پتروشیمی کار تحقیق توسعه انجام دادم چند سالی در سی ان و همچنین در شرکت های مهندسی و و در شرکت های ساب لیسانس با ساب لیسانس های مختلفی کار کردم در انتخاب تکنولوژی در انتخاب انده کار کردم در دو دلیجنس کار کردم و سال های اخیرم در شرکت های مهندسی کارهای سیبیلیتی استادی کارهای کانسپچوال دیزاین دیتیل دیزاین کامیشنگ استارتاب انجام دادم همزمان با این در دانشگاه های کانادا و خارج از کانادا مثل مالزی در کره جنوبی از من خواسته شده درس های رو ارائه دادم سفرهای داشتم برای ترینینگ و ارائه کورس و کار منتورینگ انجام میدم برای مهندسین جوان مهندسین فراغ تحصیل و حتی ایمیگرنت هایی که کارهای تخصصی خودشون رو دارن برای اینکه در جامعه کانادا بتونن اون چیزی که دوست دارن به اصطلاح بهش برسن این من فکر می کنم این کافیه در کاری ترینینگ زیاد انجام میدم در ورکشاپ هایی میدم برای پیو پروفشنال انجینیرینگ در ونکوور در اونتاریو صحبت so, کنیم امروز خانم دکتر ما اکسپکت داشتیم خیلی بیشتر شرکت کنن شاید آقای مهندس موقف شما تجربتون زیاده شاید به خاطر کرونا زیاد در واقع مهندسا خیلی چیز نیستن که بعد از شیش شاید جوین بشن خیلی جلو کامپیوتر بودن صبح و شب ولی ممکن هستش که حالا جوین بشن شما فکر کنم بتونن شروع کنن آقای مهندس اگر منتظر کسی نیستیم به تدریج جوسان آرام آرام ظاهر میشن برای خانم دکتر من معتقدم که از اتاری پریزنتیشن دو شروع کنید هر زمانم که سلام میدونی okay. بفرمان که کسانی که سوال دارن بله. بله. با اجاز آقای استاد عزیز من گفتم اگر به پریزنتیشن به انگلیسی باشه برای اینکه ترما هم انگلیسیه خیلی وقت میگیره که بخوای ترجمه کنی اینه که من به انگلیسی ارائه میدم و اگر لازم شد خب سوالی چیزی بود که من باید به سویچ کنم اشکالی نداره شش قسمتش کردم شش تا اسلاید دارم یه ساعت پلان کردم که حرف بزنم و تقریبا شش تا سیکشن از سوال جواب هستش نزدیک سی دقیقه تا چل پنج, چل پنج دقیقه برای اون در نظر گرفتم حالا پونزده دقیقه برای چیزی که اکسترا شد و به صلاح طولانی شد فقط من آماده بشم برای اوکی لیزرم بیارم که لیزر راحت کارمو راحت میکنه لش کنند بدون لیزر هم میتونیم کار کنیم. اون کجا رفتین لیزر؟ همچنین. OK. OK. 
um, uh, we, um, tonight, welcome everybody to tonight's um, webinar. My topic is about composite processing and technology. Um, uh, I try to just give you an introduction to material properties of polymer, then give you an introduction to composite material and talk a little bit about mechanical behavior of composite, composite manufacturing and some advances that we got in composite sectors. Material property of polymer is important in design. When everything is balanced, no problem, that's right. But when we have problem like this case, no, no not stiff enough problem, not strong enough or not tough enough broken or too heavy. So um, to, uh, to go through the mechanical property, I need to, to describe you a strength. What is strength means in uh, composite world or polymer world is the amount of energy or stress that material can stand without breaking or fracturing or damaging. What is the hardness? Hardness is the measure of the resistance of material to scratching. And what is elasticity? is describing the ability of the material to be stretched and then can return back to the, the similar size that had original size or dimension. Brittleness is the, the brittleness is, is defined as a, uh, the uh, tendency to break uh, or um, fracture before stretching. And duct ductility is the amount of energy that you need to give to the material uh, to be stretched before just failure. Um, the very important tester that we use, we call it the strength tester. Uh, this, um, this tester uh, is a machine uh, we use for, um, for measuring the strength of the material, polymer material, composite material. We make a test uh, specimen based of ASTM D638, the the same size, the same uh, thickness that uh, we have in procedure. We make it, we uh, put it in the two jars, upper uh, can um, fix it firmly to the jars up and down. And then uh, we try to, uh, the first step is we put it there firmly, uh, stick it to the machine and we try to turn on the machine. And you see here, there is a force that take the samples uh, just stretch it as much as it can to, till we get a fracture. The machine itself give us the curve. So it is the, the one where we have the original size and you see that's stretching up to the fractures. This is curve, we get force against elongation. And this is a breaking point. We call this test tensilometer or tensile strength test. In, in engineering world, we have a couple of terms, engineering stress, which is force or pressure divided by original um, area or cross section that we have. And this is average because the momentary changes, that's right. And then we have engineering strain, which is elongation. The, the changes that we got for dimension of uh, the specimen divided by the original size. And this is also average we use. And what is the toughness? Toughness is energy that you need to get, to give to the, the sample to reach to the fracture. And it's really this area. I mean, when you have um, bigger area, your, your material has bigger toughness. And what is uh, ductility? Ductility is percentage of the dimension change in regards to original size to get to breaking point, fracture point. Originally, we didn't have any, uh, you know, this, we didn't have this necking and fracture. What happened, we, we push, we stress it, and then we got first necking means we got size changes here, area, area section changes, and in this point, we get fracture. In, uh, for deformation of polymers, um, what I, I, I like to, to talk about it is which kind of behavior they, they show. Um, there, there is so many different behavior, but I think this is three category is the most uh, major one. In curve A, you see that we, uh, we apply stress, megapascal, 60 megapascal, and then we get break. In this point, the, the strain, which is the elongation or percentage of the, the, uh, the dimension changes very little. So this, we call this brittle 
means the polymer or metal or whatever it is that breaking at the, at this point. For uh, the other material, we have B, curve B, which is we have elongation at certain point linear, and then we got peak, and then you see the formation. This we call them plastic behavior. And we have the third one is curve C. You see that uh, we got a lot of a strain and elongation till at very low stress, low force, till we get a break point. In this presentation, my, my focus is more on curve B, uh, which is here I show you again the same thing, stress is strain, which is the, you know, the, the same test we a we, few slides ago, we just talked about it. We have linear elastic deformation, means stress, uh, when we apply stress, elongation changes uh, along with it. And we, we will reach the zone that is non-linear, still elastic till yield stress, what that means. If I remove the force or pressure or what, they go back to the original size they had. After yield strength, I have a necking phenomenon, which if I remove the force here, doesn't go back the same size I had. And then I have plastic deformation till I get fracture. Uh, this explanation all about this material is for uh, getting the basic material property, which is, uh, uh, and generally, I need density because very important things in uh, in regard to making how much the cost will, you know how, how much cost me the material making it. So if I get mm, higher density, I need to multiply the cost. So I need to expense more money to make the 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 part. And in mechanical part, I have a stiffness. Very, very important means it's a presentation representation of Young's modulus E gigapascal. That's right. And I have yield strength, which elastic limit megapascal. In in for ductile material, which is material that has elasticity property, uh, this too can be shown here. When I have in linear deformation, I stress the strain, give me a kind of uh, um, tangent of this, give me a young modulus when then I get an elastic limit. This elastic limit is kind of representation of yield stress for ductile material. And for brittle material, I have, I like, I, I'm focusing on fracture strength because I don't get a yield. I don't get a, a deform, a more than deformation I have here. So I use that uh, curve to find out how much strength I have to get to reach to the strength. For this material, the second one, I get, uh, lower modulus and uh, but tough you know this curve uh, the area is much bigger than this one so this is a basic material we need to see it and then uh, in in real world young modulus this chart I want to show you the young modulus against for different material what they have it just it's good to have this data when you want to make a kind of study so for for metal is the highest modulus I can get that's right tungsten carbides uh, alloy steel nickel copper uh, glass glass fiber uh, polymer polyester ABS all of that and then you see the Isoprene is the go down, means uh, modulus is very low, rubber is low, foam are low. So this is good to know. Uh, and also I talk about density. I said density is critical for us because of the cost. And because of the, when it's, we use heavier, uh, the cost of making it, the cost of also operation of the part is high. So in, in this chart, I want to show you young modulus against the density. You see the metal, you have very good uh, modulus, but density is high. So what can I do? Why not using ceramic? Ceramic is give me very good uh, modulus, but uh, still uh, is um, kind of heavy than, than other. Composite is in the middle is optimum location. Polymers are here and elastomer is lowest young modulus you can get like as form, but wood is in between. <clears throat> now, uh, the question is, um, now I know the, the, the property of polymer. So if I make the part, uh, which kind of deformation, which kind of failure could happen? There's so many different type, but I would say fatigue first thing that's, that's very critical for us. 
uh, because uh, there's um, so many applications under fatigue. You have cyclic stresses. So, and then you look at, okay, uh, stress against stress or force against number of cycles. You put, you use steel, like meet, meet the great carbon steel. You see, if I increase the number of cycle stress and going from top to the center in the middle, and then get the limit, and then, you know, that's reduce the, the strength. If I use aluminum alloy, there's so much decrease for the uh, basic of when you increase the number of cycles. That's uh, the uh, uh, the behavior of the the this alloy against the cycling stress. Fatigue cause mm, failure. You have to design not to reach this point. Another uh, failure could be because of impact, because of uh, stress that you can get. What we do in uh, we have two tests, Sharpie and also Izod. These two testing we do but to know if the material is okay for the application. What we do, uh, we make a notch, V-notch. This is a specimen. We make a V-notch and uh, make it ready for being broken. But uh, press ASTM 2D256, one of them is that. So we have a procedure. So, and we put the specimen here. And then this uh, ha hammer, we have a hammer and the weight is based off the ASTM. We have a specific weight and keep it at a specific height. And actually in different, uh, and depending on the specimen, we could heat it up or cool it down, whatever it is, or ambient temperature do it. And then when you release the hammer, the, uh, the, um, the, hit the, uh, the hammer hit the, hit the, the, this specimen, it broken it and give us, okay, how much energy needed to get that failure. All of these things is good for us to reach the, the, this, our design goal. We want to create products at the end that is efficient. Also, it is safe when we manufacture it and also is after operation and also in acceptable um, cost for us. So we, we based off all of data I show you or is, is in the places in industry or academic world, we choose the candidate material, we test it, we analyze the, the material results and property, which one, and uh, based off how many testing we have done. And then we select the material per target design requirement that we needed. And this is really back to the application. And then after that, we, we will choose our manufacturing process to make it. And this is all, and if you find out how much cost us, this all is, this part is characterization of material and uh, this part is selection and implementation of design. We didn't pr 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 produce anything, it just implementation of design. So I think this section, I uh, can give you time to ask any question you have. Um, so, Dr. Shoku, you want us to actually ask question in between or at the end? Which one you prefer? Um, I think uh, I have a, like if every section uh, is, is good to if they have few minutes, like five minutes maximum. Uh, if okay, they have can a, I have a question then? Yes. <clears throat> so the variables you mentioned uh, were so clear uh, in order to choose um, like the material uh, for different um goals actually like mm -hmm. if we want uh, my question would be if we want more flexibility like for example like a rubber um uh we we should choose uh, from range of materials provided based on the cost and the characteristic that they can add to the material to the composite itself we can choose from that um is there any like um, a list of this uh, variables with their effect on the composite different characteristic uh, provided in any standard or uh, it's like best practice that we can refer yeah. to? 
Okay, so um, I hope my question was clear. I think it's it was pretty good. Clear. Yeah, pretty good question. Thank you. So uh, you know this uh, this uh, uh, I didn't reach the composite, but it still is just general. Doesn't matter is polymer or composite or any you know uh, any material we have. Uh, the the resin that we get, for example, I know I want to make a composite. That's right. I want to make a composite from uh, poly, poly, polypropylene with some mm -hmm. fiberglass. I I can buy the polypropylene from, for example, Dow Chemical or mm -hmm. any other company like Basel. So they give me a spec sheet. So I know that's grade, a specific grade. They have like hundred grades. They have this kind of. Uh, like uh, modules, they have uh, tensile strength, they have uh, all kind of testing they have done, they give me the sheet. They said, this is a data sheet for that grade. So I can choose choose which one is close to my application. And basically also when you want to uh, make a part, you know, you can search for which kind of material they already used based off the industrial or even academic work. So you know, you're not going off from rail. So do you, you know which part you have to go. And then, uh, but that's, that's, but that doesn't mean that ex exact is what you need to do. So you need to do your testing as well. And you need to add whatever you need, um, additive, or you need to add fiberglass to it and then measure it and see to, to get that re reach to that point. So yes, there are many, many specification on data sheets to look. Um, and like, if you need an elastomer, uh, elastomer uh, so it has a data sheet, you need a plastic one, thermoplastic, we have that. So it's all can be collected. If, if you just uh, want to make a part, simple part, there's a data sheet use. But if you do research and development, okay, you need to do more work and more testing. Did I answer so your question? So we know our, for sure. Yeah, that was great. So we know our, our required specification and then uh, we ask for that. And then after that, when we receive it, we can check the data sheet and then we can do some testing like tensile testing, for example, yeah. and see if it's, um, uh, what we want, or otherwise we can again ask for some changes, right? Yeah, right. It, most, most of time you want to do compounding, so it's not just really uh, just one resin. So mm -hmm. you could get two resin and like polypropylene or mm, polycarbonate or what you can choose them, and you add them to the and then you see that which range will change. Like when when we have a they, they, when they give you data sheet, it's not exact. You know, none of the polymer composite in the world is exact. Like uh, number is the range of a spec, and you have to be in the that range for that application. So as long as you're in the range, it's good for you. Uh, and uh, some not not all of these items are uh, applicable for any application. So you need to choose which which one you need. If it's if it's toughness is okay for you, or no, I need stiffness. That's different. Mm -hmm. So yes, there is data available, but you have to do your testing as well, and then you have to maybe compounding the material. And it's, maybe that material is not exist most of the time, and you have to make it, compound it, or make a composite of it. Sure. Thank you. No problem. So uh, it, it still at the end of, uh, I, we have a lot of time to go to the question. Um, so I think it's a few minutes good. Uh, no, I want to talk about composite. What is composite means? Okay. Uh, when I have two combination of material, I have reinforcing phase, which is reinforcement material or the fiber phase, and I have matrix phase. What is the role of the uh, reinforcement of fiber, uh, fiber phase? That is, Want we add the fibers to reduce the tendency to uh, fail on the uh, condition, which is could be stress, could be uh, pressure, could be uh, very severe kind of condition environment, and you want to save money because you want to use lighter weight, and you want to save money uh, to make it with some um, process that gets same st uh, stiffness. So that's the uh, role of the fibers generally. And what is the matrix doing in this uh, composite? The role of, you know, reinforcing material could be flay, could be pellet, could be fibers, long fibers, short fibers, could be uh, particles, but all of them are embedded in matrix. That's right. Matrix is what is doing is binding all the fibers together, but main role is transfer load or stress or pressure to the fiber. 
because the fiber is the most strong part. And then fiber will protect uh, and protects fiber from damaging overall in the matrix. So advantage, why we want to, why, why want to want to uh, produce composite because they have a higher specific strength. What that means, means a strength to the weight ratio. Means uh, if I, I use low, um, low, less weight, I get more really high specific. And the, the reason is um, a lot of, um, uh, uh, if, if I show you the, the, in the chart, a specific tensile strength, if I show that to you, when look at the um, different, uh, different material, you see that uh, combination of reinforcement and matrix or resin give me very good property compared to when I'm using just one, uh, just single com component. If I use just wood or alloy or titanium, but still the tensile, uh, specific tensile strength, which is ratio of strength to the weight ratio is lower. When I'm going to composite, like E-grade uh, e glass uh, or S, which is strength grade, grade glass composite or Kevlar and high strength carbon composite, they are jumping. And similarly for tensile modulus. So the same, you see there is a jumping for the having the better um, the better property. That's one of the um, advantage to using composite into making them. The second thing is uh, the low relative investment. A lot when a few slides later, we talk about the pre preparing and manufacturing them is very, the other, uh, some procedures, uh, some process very cheap to make them. And uh, it's, 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 you know, uh, it's very good uh, to uh, use the um, uh, manufacturing facilities, it's simple, cheap to make them. Durability of the composite are uh, very uh, good. Long lifespan, along with low maintenance requirement is, 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 a, good, uh, is a good advantage for critical application, for example, the word that we need using aircraft or, or the um, racing car. Design flexibility, what that means. We can use um, uh, many various material and uh, giving the different uh, shape to, uh, to at very low cost. For example, for boats, they have so many shapes, so many configuration you can make it from the composite. And this is good design flexibility. Um, the, the, uh, the other important part uh, of this advantage is uh, they have a good corrosion resistance when you want to handle chemicals. Uh, when you, you know, your environment is very uh, corrosive, uh, we could, composite, they show very be good behavior and in high temperature or low temperature also, uh, of course, uh, like um, aircraft, uh, this is very good application. But as I said, composite has matrix and also has reinforcement part. These are mostly the main important uh, matrix. I mean, you could use metal or polymer or elastomer or ceramic foam or natural material like wood. All of this is possible and adding them reinforcement material. In this uh, slide tonight, I just talk about a few, few of them because of um, timing that we have. Metal matrix, they give us higher modulus ductility and resistant to very high temperature compared to other composite. But these are very heavier and more difficult to process. The sample uh, example of this matrix metal is aluminum, magnesium, lead, copper, all of them, and alloy, which I, each I use uh, reinforcement graphite with them. I can uh, have application for satellite, for helicopter structure, all of this. Braun is also a very good um, reinforcement to make blades, very, very strong blades, uh, and also alumina with, uh, with, uh, with metal uh, is has uh, for a superconductor, a silicon carbide and molybdenum tungsten in high temperature engine component. All of this is they using metal, metal matrix. What the uh, second category is ceramic, if they call it CMC. Uh, we use this uh, CMC when we need a um, high temperature or corrosive, uh, we're working in, you know, using that part for a corrosive environment. Uh, 
and they're strong, they're stiff, and but they, they lack uh, toughness because it's kind of brittle. Which kind of material uh, the CMC has is you can use silicon carbide, silicon nitride, aluminum oxide, compounding of aluminum, silicon, silicon, and oxygen. They can stand to 3,000 Fahrenheit. Uh, wh which kind of fiber we can use with this uh, ceramics material? We can generally we can use carbon and aluminum oxide. Application is for really very expensive, like jet. Uh, and jeans and cutting tools, dyes and pressure work. So all of this is tough material and also parts and very expensive dyes and pressure vessels. So this can be made from ceramics matrix. What about polymer matrix? Uh, we usually use thermoplastic or thermoset. The difference between thermoplastic is thermoset is when you heat the thermoplastic, you can mold it back, you can reshape it. If you do that with thermoset, it will not happen. Uh, the example of this um, polymer is polyester is very uh, use, uh, they are they used for many sectors, industrial, epoxy, which 80% of reinforced plastic is really we use epoxy, fluorocarbon, silicon, phenolic, vinyl ester, polyamide, polypropylene, PEK, and so many other. So polyester is one of the biggest one. Uh, we have a lot of uh, application when we want to have um, produced the structure with lower cost. For high performance, like high modulus and strength in aerospace, we, we use epoxies. Now, we talk about metrics. Now, what about reinforcement parts, the second phase? Um, the, it's a lot. We have a list of, of so many fibers, but uh, the major one, I just try to give you a couple of examples. Glass fiber reinforced plastic, GFRP. This can have 30 to 60% per, uh, percent volume percent of glass fiber and, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the metrics. Property give us high strength, high density, and is very, is not compared to other, is much less expensive. But graphite or carbon fiber reinforced plastic, CFRP. This has uh, lower density, higher stiffness and strength, but more expensive than glass fiber. So when I said less expensive, they are comparing these two. They are, because they are, most of them are the top. Brown fibers, uh, when we use brown deposit on tungsten fiber, give us high strength, stiffness, intention, and compression, uh, and extension and compression and then uh, that high temperatures, and they are heavy and expensive. Kevlar, Kevlar uh, is high, give us high specific strength, means strength divided by weight. Uh, and toughest fiber undergoes plastic deformation before fracture, but unfortunately absorb moisture and is expensive. So now we know a little bit about all of that. So we want to, uh, what is the, very high level selection criteria for all. We know the metrics are generally the tactile and tough, tactile and tough, but the enforcement are strong and low density. So combination of these two means the strength and of the reinforcement and toughness of metrics give us the property that we cannot find in uh, separate, like in single conventional material. So based off this, if I need a higher strength, I need to go to, to to have a fire, um, reinforcement that give me higher strength and higher stiffness. And the shape is really back to uh, also orientation of fibers in the matrix plus how I manufacture it. The environment condition is very critical for uh, design uh, as a design uh, criteria, because if under, under stress, cyclic stress, and is it under high temperature, low temperature, and humidity is high, or is corrosive and not corrosive? How many of this part I need to produce? This all criteria is kind of very high level we look after before manufacturing them. So I think this is a section about composite. If you have any question, you can ask. If not, any question? Dr. Shuku, may I ask a question? Yes, please. Uh, what I understood from your presentation so far that every composite has a 
requirement, every material should have a requirement and specification. There should be a standards for the manufacturers to comply with it in, the, in aspect of the stress, the strain, duct, ductility, and mm -hmm. ductile force, and some other parameters. What, is there any international standards for uh, the materials, composite materials? So it's, it's, uh, it's not standard, but what we have a specification basically from each uh, manufacturer. So if manufacturer made a specification, say this is my, uh, my uh, spec for you, and then you have to choose really is not matching. It's not like uh, steel or like um, the uh, single material that you have and will not change. If they change a little bit of reinforcement, the dramatic may change. So there is no international. There is no international for polymers, it's the same. So when we choose the polymer for application or composite, uh, it's, it's, it's just when I buy the same grade, almost the same grade from different manufacturer like Dahl or I'm buying it from Sabic or from buying every brand, you, you look, you see it's not the same. It's not, the spec is not the same. As long as um, that you, you're doing your testing, for example, you make a particle. So if you want to make, um, for example, you want to make some uh, articles uh, or some uh, parts from your uh, composite and you make them and you test them, that's right. And if, if that's get a failure, so that's where you, you find out this is not good for downstream company like you're making it, yeah, but there is no international standard. There is no international. We have collection of data, but if that doesn't mean if you, if not matching that is, is a failure, no. It's just, uh, it's various really. It's so many data sheet, so many spec we have, even for, same, for the same grade. It just, it's a lot of uh, uh, expertise needed to look after it before even testing it. So, um, there's no book or reference. There are information, but if that doesn't match that information, that doesn't mean it's not suitable or it's, it's a failure or. So is it all those based on ASP following uh, Mr. Moanis actually question? Is it something like, a, can, can we refer to any part of ASP? Uh, like for oil and gas, we have, as you know, like, for example, API. Mm -hmm. This one, probably, I didn't, I don't know, like, if, no. if it's anything. No, we don't have API. Oh. We don't have a standard for polymer, even though when we make, so just to be clear, so like in, in oil and gas, okay, refinery, for example, oil and gas or upstream, downstream, they have, um, as me, they have API, they have, you, when you go to build a polymer plant, there's no such a standard for every part of uh, the part. We have a specific uh, requirement, which is designed by that licensor. Like if I go to uh, oh. polypropylene licensor, they give me specific, so following that. But that doesn't mean that the other one followed that specification. It's not like oil and gas or other, uh, you know, steel companies or is 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 uh, is various and there's no standard. We, we have ASTM, ASTM to to test them, uh, but then we collect the data and we have a minimum maximum. As long as if if say this uh, this resistance should be minimum that and this as long as that's reach is okay. Doesn't need to be like exact. Uh, 15 megapascal doesn't it as long as my minimum is seven megapascal and I am above seven is okay that's what we do there's no uh, such a standard that's why uh, is, uh, is, is each each technology like if I'm making polypropylene and making composite and Dow DuPont has all their spec and uh, so and they work with their customers and they f find updates application it's not such a global in standard that everyone should follow that. I hope that I answer your question. Okay, so. Thank you. Thank you. So mechanical behavior of, okay. So, uh, uh, okay. So as I said, one of the problem as, as I said, is there's no standard. The reason is uh, reinforcement material like 
uh, it, this is a metric matrix is a shape of uh, kind of I put this matrix and shape of the particles or reinforcement is like dot dot inside. Uh, if I change that to flake or fibers, short or long, give me different material, a different property. If I continuously using the fiber con uh, fiber long uh, continuous fiber around the whole of my matrix and oriented it uh, differently, give me very different property. So that's why it's so many vari uh, variation. So I, I showed the example. Here, I have a uh, tensile strength, which is based of PSI. That's right, I, I'm applying, uh, I'm applying this uh, stress, uh, uh, stress to, for example, uh, carbon fibers, uh, material that has carbon fibers. The resin that has carbon fiber, like plastic, nylon, has carbon fibers. You see the behavior, uh, the percentage of reinforcement. When I change the percentage of reinforcement from 10 to 30 and reaching 30, this fiber carbon uh, car carbon fibers give me, for example, around less than 30 uh, strength. If I use uh, the same material, nylon, with short fiber, gla fi short glass fibers, give me less. And if I use long, give me higher. So the the type first of the type of uh, the fiber impact property also. Uh, if I uh, I've changed the, the the length of the fiber, and if I increase from thirty to forty, it will also change. Now on the orientation part, tensile will change basically based of the um, it, it, based of the if it's random means no orientation. If I know, have no orientation for fiber, my matrix has full of different uh, fibers go around in different uh, direction, the, the tensile strength is very low. If I change that uh, configuration to make parts has matrix that which has some angle to give some angle to the fibers, I get better improvement. And if I have unidirection means all of fibers align in one direct, Shen, inside the matrix, give me the highest. So all is is the same material, same fibers, but uh, you see they the give me very different uh, results. So making it, how make it is, is give you a very different for the mechanical property. So now for modeling it, so this is where you, you do your, your homework. So modeling it is, if, if I assume this is a matrix which has fibers, fibers is long, we assume all the same size and distributed very uh, homogeneously around and very good, you know, uh, for modeling. And I have um, this is fiber direction, and I have uh, I, I, I have uh, this direction is along the fibers. This direction is 90 degree against the fibers transverse, and this is normal direction. Okay, my assumption is all all fibers aligned in one um, direction and homogeneous homogen size. I I assume that VF is the fiber volume fraction of all of fibers inside the matrix, and my matrix volume fraction would be one minus VF. That's right. That's we using it. So very simple calculation using rule of mixture, the composite density, for example. I can use the roll of mixture, uh, uh, density of uh, fiber multiplied by volume fraction of the reinforcement for the same calculation plus the same calculation for matrix. Give me the total density of, com of composite. So that's where you, you look. Um, if you want higher density, lower density, that's where you, you try to reach by changing it to, to get the density you want. Modulus. Uh, in in along along the fibers is has highest along modulus. This is the same rule, same mixture of rule. Um, this is volume fraction of fiber multiply uh, modulus modulus of uh, fibers. The same thing for them plus the same thing for the matrix. But in transverse direction, modulus is lowest because the fibers are not helping. Is uh, so 90 degrees. So this is very much less. And in normal direction, which is out of plane, the modulus that's that direction is shear. That's really shear uh, modulus is also less. For example, uh, you can calculate that in this presentation, like when you like, 
use the carbon fiber density and modulus here, and then epoxy, same, and try to find out if I have 70% VF is 0 0.7, means 70% of the, um, the composite is uh, fiber, and uh, how, much, how much I can get uh, density total, my total density for composite, and how much would be modulus. You can calculate it, really, and find out uh, what would be. Uh, the changes uh, in combining these two material together and how much improvement you get for the modulus and uh, density. So I think this is the, uh, I have, uh, I have the, this is the, this section I have a few minutes. So if you want to have a question, if you have. I can go ahead further um, manufacturing. So uh, the the first, like all the simplest, cheapest really way was hand layup, which means uh, is kind of, this is a mold, open mold. And some people, they call it contact mold. And uh, what, what you do, you put fabric, which has that reinforcement material and then uh, on the mold and you put resin, which is matrix kind of has like thermoset, most of it's thermoset material. You brush it in and you try to make sure there is no void or this is what you do and let it be uh, cured because they need time. Then you can uh, use it after curing happen. This is uh, now sometimes people use drying for reinforcement, uh, which uh, and generally, a lot of places we use really uh, release agent means mold need to be uh, you, you, you pr produce some coating and you need to re re remove it. So release agent help you to to uh, to that material uh, remove to be removed easily from the mold. You apply gel coat. What is gel coat is doing? Gel coat is coating is uh, try when we when I have that in this formulation. Uh, blister and stain resistance goes up, toughness is, goes up, weather ability is good, pigment and surface I get. That's why uh, gel, gel is coating is doing. But you need to cure it, for example, in elevated temperature in an oven. And then when that's done, uh, you add your resin, which is thermoset most of the time. You add the resin and then you put the reinforcement top of it and you try to brush it. So they take any bubbles. Uh, entrapped aid because that will be defects in your uh, composite. So, and then you let cure in the ambient temperature. A lot of time, maybe you need to heat it up, but uh, this is where the hand layup process is very simple. Advantage is low investment and low and cost tools because very simple. You can produce very large parts like boats and very complex shape very complex shape and a lot of places that we need corrosion resistant, we are using this hand layup, but it's labor intensive and it's costly. Anywhere you need to use labor is very costly and quality is not easy to control and in, you have inconsistency in the product. And production rate is low because as it's a small volume you need sometimes, but it's low. Sometimes it's, uh, you need uh, more parts, but you cannot make it. Slow speed, long production cycle, you have to keep it a few hours here and keep it a few hours there. So uh, the most worst is production environment is poor. Other and dust, when you make it, generate an unhealthy and you have to have, to have um, kind of protection to, for the health point of view to make sure that they are not uh, injuring themselves. Application is a lot of application for have we have for hand layup in aircraft, making boats and submarine, truck camper, host, uh, household, and a lot of other places. A spray up is, a little, is kind of a little bit different than uh, hands, uh, hand layup because we, we need to, we are using gone here. What is gone is doing is roofing, roofing, which is kind of the fiber, but it's kind of rope or roofing shape Gun cause uh, gun pull it and, and uh, kind of um, uh, chop it to the specific size they need it. At the same time, resin and catalyst. Catalyst for the curing is need good to to get very quick 
curing and then resin is going through and you you know spraying the on the mold and then after that you try to remove air bubbles the good thing of spray up there is so many robots is doing that right now uh, robot is doing gel coating as coating as well as uh, simultaneously can spray up resin and reinforcement material so it's speeding up the process the advantage of spray up compared to hand layup is is faster more uniform resin placement and no limitation in which part is as big or uh, you can go to speaker size uh, and less skill labor required if they are using robot more difficult to control thickness here compared to other uh, land more expensive slightly more expensive because of the gun you're using the other important is when you use this resin you need to go through the gun and uh, spray you cannot use very high viscosity viscosity or resin that that doesn't flow easily you have to uh, use the resin with low viscosity and that's when you use that you do that you compromise mechanical property or thermal property Okay, um, do you have any question on these two? Because uh, autoclave is very interesting. Very Before going to autoclave, do you have any questions so far? No? Autoclave. Autoclave is, is really a manufacturing process that you're using on oven with high temperature and high pressure to allow the, the, the composite uh, to cure. Is, here is open. Uh, autoclave and here uh, I have the parts going when they want to put it in and because of the pressure uh, is um, kind of homogen around the part uh, I can get very good mechanical property because it's very um, uh, it's a good shape to make it and in this case I have uh, vacuum bag. I use the vacuum bag. In some cases, I need to push, like I, I put it in vacuum bag that makes sure any venting from the resin and can go through uh, out from, from the vent line. Uh, but the, 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 the inside autoclave is high pressure. So this is just uh, can keep uh, vacuum till when you finish the, uh, you know, curing the, the material. Detail of the step is this. This is a kind of autoclave. You load autoclave with parts, you put it in the middle, and then you apply pressure. Uh, what you do, you're using nitro, for this case, we can use nitrogen. You pressure it like to five bar or four bar. You start the fan for circulation because you want to have very um, good circulation with as much as you can with uh, constant fixed speed. And then you heat it up and with a specific rate, like five degrees C per uh, minute. And then when you reach the temperature you need, uh, you maintain for a couple of hours. And then uh, in the, that when the process is done, you're ramping down the temperature, you depressurize and you're, you stop the fan. Um, what one of the uh, one of the major concern is an autoclave is the cost, and that's depend on uh, various factors. The first thing is the, how you design and construct the, the autoclave, because this is a pressure vessel. Yes, you have to follow as me, and you if you have higher di diameter or length or you need insulation, it will be get much costly if you use very high temperature or high pressure, the same thing. So you have to have a balance uh, of this. So this is where you need to look for, uh, bring down your cost as much you can. The other side also when you operation factors, are you using pressurizing gas? Because this, as I said, you want to pressurize the, the, the parts inside the autoclave. Are you using nitrogen or you are using air? Yes, air is cheaper, but is some places air it causes you a sparking and fire or are you you can use co2 which is has limited pressure and sub above that pressure you may not use co2 so this is well choice uh, you have to look and then how you heating up the uh, oven is it by gas or electric if it's a small oven you can do it by electricity if it's big you can you have to have gas fire so this is where uh, this uh, kind of cost also you need to look. 
application is a lot of places, but mainly uh, one of major sector is aerospace because they want high quality laminate. Laminate, what does laminate means? When you make a composite and top of that, another composite and top of that, and they want to put together this lamination and that's autoclave is the best to do that. But limitation, what is the limitation of this process? The size, you cannot go beyond some size. It's, it's, it's difficult and also has large capital investment. On this picture, you see the, the, the aircraft parts stacked in an autoclave. They're ready to, you know, to process there, to be processed. Um, another uh, process, uh, pultrusion. Pultrusion is uh, is the continuous. It's not like other one, which is like similar, like batch wise. This is a continuous process. It's a good thing so when you use continuous material, but uh, it you need uh, in this process is constant cross section you make. Is uh, you you can use fiberglass and the form of fiberglass we call roving, is look like that, and you can have different roving. And mat is kind of a reinforcement material uh, made, uh, it's, it's like engineered mat. It's, you, what you do, you put it in resin tank, which is a lot of time you could use thermoset or thermoplastic. And try to uh, embed it there and, you know, and then you need to use surfacing wheel, which is a lot of places is on polyester because you want, you don't want to damage the dye. Dye is very expensive and very sensitive. What you do, fiber may damage the dye. So this is like protection for the dye. After impregnation of this all, you need to cure it in dye and you pull it back, go back, pull it to toward the the shape, giving them the shape or size, which like simple cutting off, for example, here. This puller is uh, helping you to do that. It's like if you're familiar with extrusion, is is different than extrusion. Extrusion, you push this way. Plutrusion is you pulling this, uh, you pulling this way. So it's a similar uh, process, really, but different mechanism. So uh, this is our application. You can use them in, in buildings and frame, window frames and uh, ladder and rails and uh, bridges and I-beams and, and uh, so many construction. Uh, the advantage of this, uh, give you high production rate, it continues, give you high production rate and process parameters are easy controllable. Low manual labor because it's automated kind of precise control over cross section dimension and good quality surface surface quality and distribution of the reinforcement and concentration can go very high means you can get very good property but disadvantage uh, just you can make uniform cross section profile but for the complex is difficult because if you want to make complex profile you need to change um, polling mechani mechanism which is not easy and not uh, uh, cheap to do. It needs high investment, power, space, layout, equipment, like engineered math is expensive to do, make it. And poly mechanism has CAPEX and OPEX too. Plutrogen. Now, filament uh, winding. This is a process, again, it's continuous. What you do is, you know, roving is this, this roving is the, the, your fiber, that's right. And you, you could have so many of them. And yeah, pull them through the resin, which is thermoset most of time here. And then try to uh, wrap it around the mandrel. Mandrel is rotating. And then by rotating that you cover the parts on which is located on the mandrel. Here is more picture kind of showing more detail. I have a drive that is uh, moving, uh, the, moving the mandrel in this direction. And I have a carriage that moving the filament, um, kind of uh, moving around from here to there to make sure that all a different pattern cover the, the resin. Uh, this is the filament going through the bat, which resin bat, and then the, the composite will Will uh, uh, will wrap around the uh, mandrel, and could be different pattern. That's and then uh, that's when you get here, it's done. Um, advantage is automated process. You give high quality and repeatable. 
and the cost is when you look at autoclave is much cheaper, low cost manner, quick and reliable technology, give you to very high volume fraction of the fiber inside, you can put as much as 80%. And that uh, brings us very good material property and I can get high strength and high stiffness. Disadvantage, you can do this um, process only on symmetric parts because of the way we do it. And void content, which is the bubbles, air bubbles, we try to get rid of them sometimes, is high in this. And you have to use autoclave. You have to make sure this is gone uh, and the other way to, to remove that. So that's a disadvantage. The, I, I told you there's so many patterns you can do. We can hope, hope winding, which means if I, this is mandrel uh, and rotating this way, that's right. Now I have parts on the mandrel. This part, I want to cover it with, uh, with the composite, which is really uh, roving and wetted in the resin. So if I have a 90 degree uh, wrap, wrapping the mandrel in part with 90 degree, this is called hope, hope binding. Start from here, move around, reach here. And that's where final uh, uh, profile would be. The other pattern I can get, they call it helical wind winding, which means I get angle, commonly 45 angle. Again, the mandrel moving uh, all, all the time. You start from here, you're wrapping up the, uh, the composite on top of the parts, and then you could change 45 to 60 or 30, depending on what you need. And you can get it um, at the end profile, at the end like that. or you can wrapping up the parts uh, like zero degree from uh, rotation axis, which is kind of this way. So you try to wrap all, all along. Uh, application is very good for when we have large pipes for pressure, different pressure vessel. And uh, here I have a rocket motor casing. Here I have the blades making it from this turbine, wind, uh, turbine blades and I have breathing apparatus and more from this uh, process I can make. Um, okay, uh, if you have any question on filament, if not, I can move to the next, which is longer uh, pro process. Dr. Shukun, I asked yes. a question. In Iran, which type of these composite materials are manufactured? And in the level of quality, does it, uh, uh, any competition between Iranian? Oh yeah, um, yes. And yes. The global market, yes. In the global market? Yes. So uh, the, the, the main thing is we have, a, we have very small companies. We have, there are so many big in manufacturing actually depend on the, so uh, for example, air, aircraft, uh, for, for example, for aircraft, what they do, um, they do the resistion development. So the, uh, they do, when they spend money, they, they try to do a lot of testing. They try to keep quality up. Some of them, they, they're using very um, high technology um, to make it, as long as the consistency and quality is better. Some of them, no, they try to be cheap and we have a lot of small companies and manufacturers, they do that. So they don't want to spend money to, to use a robot or to use the latest technology. That's where it's about quality. That's right. It's about quality. So where that uh, those are, they, 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 don't, they lose their market gradually. And those where they have very good resistance development and they try to use the latest um, technology and, and, and the modeling and online modeling and using that and manufacture it, not just by old fashion, uh, they, they cover, you know, they cover all marketing. So uh, day by day, the small companies with manual work will, will go away and the more bigger company will come. So, but um, depending on the, the industry sector, automobile has they, their, their marketing, their, uh, kind of uh, their manufacturer 
which, for example, GE is doing a lot of work. So I work with GE sometimes, and I would say GE has very good, making very good uh, uh, kind of resin and also making good composite. That's right, because they spend a lot of money on research development. They have a lot of people just working in developing the products and then applying in the manufacturing. But some company, no, they don't use that and they don't even hire people to do that. So, um, so in aerospace, they, they spend a lot of money. Um, so it's very, very different. Some country, the, the, like they do a lot of labor, they produce very, very low quality, but they have their, their customer anyway, because they want, those people also want this cheap product. So. I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> the question was about Iran. Do we have any manufacturing in our country, Iran? Oh, yeah, in Iran. Uh, so the, in Iran, we have the knowledge. Um, uh, you know, the, because I studied polymer in Iran, um, very good uh, university, and a lot of knowledge is there. Implementation of that knowledge um, needs technology, needs equipment to implement it. So the problem is how you, you know, you can get that uh, technology. The knowledge is there, the, you know, a lot of old process there, but uh, for example, uh, you know, in new world of composite world, you need a, a, a quality, online quality check, not making it, then test it, and it's not good, go back and do it, it's very expensive. So now we are thinking about online quality check, which is, is very expensive to do. And uh, not a lot of people, not like car, for making car, not a lot of company doing that right now, just a few of them, they do that. So yeah, the knowledge is there in manually um, for proce processing is there, but reaching the, the, that uh, level of uh, competition needs a research development needs, um, uh, uh, need uh, technology, new new technology to be used, and uh, you know that's difficult in every in many places. So. I'm sorry to for uh, regarding that. Does, for example, Iran Khodro using any of this technology to making the uh, yes. body parts of the car? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then when I go through the cards, you see there's so advancement they have done. Uh, they do. Um, but percentage of it, how much the percentage we reach, that's different. So when you look at the application, uh, they didn't reach that that level, but it's not something that we, we don't have it. So when, when I reach at the end, I will more explain. So the, the, this is very classic. This has been in the, this process I'm explaining is, has been in like 50, 40 years, 60 years. But the only thing changing is new material, new technology bringing in. So uh, that's where, uh, and, and all of that uh, is so many other process. I, I, I don't have time to explain to you because it's very, like just one hour. So many other things is there to make it composite, but uh, I didn't bring it here because it's not necessary to do so. Uh, mo compression molding is a manufacturing that you, what you do is you put material and then you try to heat it up and give a shape in the mold. So, but you need to make sure the weight is good for that. You need to w get pre-weight amount. You cannot just, uh, because you need to have quality check at the end. Then you put it there, you put, push the upper move, and then you try to make sure all molding, no bob, no air, uh, no, no empty spot there. And then you heat it up and then cure it and then remove the part. The simply call it compression molding. And we use that for aerospace. You see, this is emergency oxygen housing, which is in, they're using it in the um, aircraft actually. And this not, this is the, this profile is complex because of all of this part. Uh, you can make it by compression molding. Auto part, like door. This door is for uh, the car that we made it by compression molding. Electrical part, homemade articles, refrigerators, gasket, hum, helmet, and so many other. 
So it's very good uh, way to produce composite. Advantage, okay, because you put the 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 the, the composite on cured uh, inside without you don't need to go through gates or runners or sprue, which is mostly the time you do in injection molding. That so if the you can that allow you to use difficult material to flow in high voice, very high, uh, very difficult material to flow means uh, it cannot go through the injection port. It cannot go through the runner gates. This is advantage because you don't have in compression molding. We don't have that. But uh, as, as well as uh, the cost of molding and tooling is, is because of all of that, we don't have that, it's cheaper. Excellent in dimensional accuracy and stability in final profile, minimum shrinkage because shrinkage is not good and we don't want that. And very uh, repeatable, producible parts you can make by compression molding. The disadvantage is you cannot use for fragile mold. Um, now, in, in the same category of this um, compression molding, because every word that you compress the composite is, we call it. So this another one is sheet molding compound, which is SMC. Uh, it seems like very complex, but it's very easy. You just don't worry about all of this. It's just additive, catalyst, whatever you need fillers. You put it, you dose it. Those means the formula tell you how much you put it in premium mixer, your temperature and viscosity and everything should be set and you dose it to the main mixer and then you might need thickener. Here is the start point. So don't forget all of this. Major is now you have a paste kind of the, the main material coming through, but you have to put the films underneath and then you put this paste then you have continuous, this is continuous process. You add fiberglass chopped one on top. The good thing of all the process, you can have long fiber and on, on, the, on the composite and then uh, going through uh, compressed rolls and then you let that uh, cure and remove the films from it and get ambient temperature. This has advantage because you, you allow to use long fiber in the product that which you give high mechanical property, which is a lot of places I need high impact and I have, I need high stiffness and give me good surface appearance and excellent electrical insulation. So basically it's good for panels, it's good for electrical parts and other structural component need high module. The other kind of process is similar to, is kind of, we put it a category of compression molding is thick molding compound, TMC. TMC is a version, is a version of SMC. Only thing is in SMC, the, this is, is uh, the, 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 the thickness in this TMC is higher. If that, I have 25 millimeter, I have here 50. And um, what we do in this process is fiberglass cutting off chopped, adding to the resin compound, which is sometimes we pre, pre mix it before and then we using uh, rolls uh, to make sure are mixed up. And then we add again the films up and down because we want to make sure that we can, re, um, you know, we, uh, this, uh, this layer is there between these two layers, we put the resin and then going through all this uh, compression rolls and we get the final thickness here at the end. In this, I can have good product for the flame res resistance, for corrosion resistance, for place that I need mechanical property, good property, and also I need the flow characteristic, good flow characteristic and low shrinkage and car stability. And that's why, and where I need to make sure, when I need the di dimension stability of the profile, which means by doesn't change by uh, environment, by force, by stress, I, I, I'm, I can use this TMC. This is a, a kind of application for TMC. And the final one I'm, I talk about is RTM, we call resin transfer molding. I told you uh, and the compression, you just put material in, is very high, uh, it's very difficult. Some of them are very difficult, like very pasty like very uh, viscous material, put it in and you can mold it. But here uh, I need a little bit 
a little bit lower uh, kind of a low viscosity to, uh, resin because I need to use to use pumping pumping up because I have to go through this nozzle. So this catalyst is for curing. Uh, I pumped them both A and B heating up and the header, like there's a piping that you heat it up by electricity and then you push it through the nozzle to the mold. Uh, mold has a male part and female part. And these dots, all of these dark dots is heat for heating and reinforcement fibers are aligned here, lined up here. And then uh, you heat it up and sometimes you need to have good flow, you need to make a vent or hole that uh, you can pull resin through and also remove air, air, po air um, pocket and void. You don't want to do void. Void is the worst thing that you could get in composite. Uh, so this is the done when you, you push, pull down, you put it timing and heating up and then cure and then open up the mold. This, this, uh, this process is good for complex mold is so many different shape. And the very good things about is you can arrange the fiber to be at the specific orientation. That gives you very, very high modulus and blades. If you know the blades on aircraft, this is a way that they use it. Uh, auto automotive parts and truck parts where they unit very good, um, very good quality and uh, good mechanical property. Okay. Uh, we uh, the 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 way the, you can use uh, you produce um, composite is so much varies in different but depending on the material you use. But I just pick few for you today. The major that is very common way or kind of classic way. And then advances in composite. When you want to advance anything for this things in polymer composite, these two things, you, you first you change, you're looking for new material or then, okay. And if you're done with that, you look for new technology to make it. So I, I, it's so many happening right now on, on you know, every university and every research development doing something. And a lot of them, they are working nano composite. So nano are, uh, nano have a very good um, uh, kind of, uh, uh, the, the reason why nano is got um, uh, the place in the market because of the um, me mechani mechanical property to the give to the, the composite is really uh, is amazing. For the percentage you add uh, compared to the cost. Um, here I have just, uh, this is in uh, articles from material science and application that shows you when I have just a polypropylene itself and nothing inside as a reinforcement, it's just a polypropylene, we make a notch, a kind of crack in the specimen and then give it time. Uh, after a while, you see the, the crack pro propagation happening. And after time that you see the is going from uh, like some, some length increase to 25 and then you get fractured. If I add uh, one person nanocomposite clay, uh, I see that uh, improvement. So at the same, uh, if I start with uh, very low crack, I need more time. Uh, if I, I reach that 10, I need, I get more time to reach that. So it gets a longer resist, a longer resistant to have the crack to pro, 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 progress. And then adding, but you cannot just continue adding certain point, why not? Why a three person is optimum. If I add more, first of all, it's expensive, more expensive for nothing. You, you reach a place that uh, it will, the composite structure, it change because the phasing and there's so many things there. So this, there's a, uh, there is a kind of optimum addition of this. So you have to make sure, and you're testing it. You make sure that you're not going beyond that point. Okay, that's one example of so many. Now in technology. So what we do in technology to get. So the aircraft, they have, uh, in sector, they have spent a lot of money. The reason is why, because they want to scale up. They want to have, production rate they had they want to get a lot of people going to to, to tra go traveling and so they need production rate 
go up. That's right. So what you do, they want to do is faster and faster as possible. You see the, in the layout, hand layout, it was the uh, originally the using for aircraft. Now it doesn't make sense. You wait for that long hours and day and 24 hours to, you know, to cure. And so what they do, they use modern laser technology to control temperature and heating up the, the uh, heating up the, um, the composite and same time they do need a lot of uh, like autoclave they don't need other process to do it and is also they have other camera they have other things they can check at the same time they, they do um, heating they make sure this is a, a homogen they have a good quality around the, the around the whole profile um, you, they use two robotic, two robot, one for, you know, placing the um, tape. The tape has composite on it, and then two two robot is doing that at the same time. Again, they check the quality. The another technology that these days they uh, they they're using it and triolon triolon quality system, uh, bring the thermography is they're using optical measurement, which um, monitor quality. At the same time, they are using it. So uh, there's a camera there. Also, when there's a defect, they don't. They try to to clean, to uh, do to uh, to uh, fix it. Um, the other important is software, so sophisticated software. Like they do all analysis. They do all even um, you know all of the um, design uh, during this software during uh, production. And that will improve the part quality because it's online manufacturing and online also quality check. Sevetech developing a new fiber patch, which uses that uh, with unidirection. You, you remember that's unidirectional material we talk about, which is has very good high mechanical property. They're using the flexible gripper with the CAD model. They're all together. What is they doing? Gripper pick the patch up, which has the property that you need. A camera exam the material if it has a defect and then try to fix it and put another one top of it, uh, optimize the strength of the part online. This is, the, uh, this is an aircraft industry. And you see right now, but if you look at 20 years ago, 10 years ago, it was 5% of composite was we used in air aircraft. Boeing 787 Dreamliner using 50% of advanced composite material. B2 Spirit uh, is using all skin with composite. AV8B Harrier composite wing are all they are using the composite material. In industry, the automobile. Automobile, if you can use the, the, the process that long fiber reinforced thermoplastic, you can produce all of these parts it's from bumper, from seat, from uh, door, all. Because when you lose, when you use long fiber reinforced thermoplastic, uh, thermoplastic is good because it's cheaper when you're using it and it's very flexible to to be used. Like you can you can produce diesel exhaust fluid system, body exterior, self reinforced airbag door system, rear rare plastic door module, recycled seat it's used uh, come from recycled foam, engine cover. Um, bumpers, high, fin high glass finish without even painting. This is not, it doesn't need any painting. Infl inflatable seat belt, front and rear, uh, rear bumper for uh, they use uh, thermoplastic, thermopolyolefin. Racing car with long fiber reinforced thermoplastic and front end carry. So all of these, um, these things happening because of material which they can add more and more fiber and longer fiber, or they can use thermoplastic or, or polyolefin inside the, you know, uh, making that happen and put that in the car. So now where, which one is in the car? A lot of, not a lot of car that you're using. Uh, I, know, I know American car, I know German car they're using, but uh, is that all of the car in the world they have that? No. The reason is uh, because this uh, this is reference. Uh, the reason is um, every, for example, the the car manufacturer work with the uh, licensors like uh, uh, polymer licensor or 
and composite producer. They work together. So it's not the car uh, manufacturer uh, have a contract with them. And even though they have, like, uh, I have to, um, I give a lecture to UOIT, which is um, University Metro Mechanical Department UIT. The the people where they can they can they, they were PhD. They just few PhD. They just working in car manufacturer in Oshawa in, in Ontario to just search on the which property, which mechanical property they have to reach for certain application in automobile. Takes for them many years, so they have to go through so many testing and you know researching. For for five years to reach some point that this this material is good for the car manufacturer. Those PhD and those also other people research they all need money to do that. That's right. Yes, and also you work with your universities. Uh, not all of the car manufacturers have that um, kind of you know money and have uh, um, possibility to to do that. So if uh, like uh, like GE is doing work with uh, Ford or other company, so they are trying to he uh, GE wants he want they want to have the produce a very good product that has a specific a specific and very high value uh, product that very sell it very expensively to to car manufacturers so they work together and car manufacturers say yeah i just give it to me not anybody else because if they give it to anybody else okay so they lose that competition so everybody is trying to have that joint venture together so research development universities work with uh, uh, like licensors um, polymers and composite licensor and then working with the industrial together all to make something that specifically works for them and uh, Dupan is doing the same thing. Dao is doing the same thing. That's why I said not everywhere you can reach that because it's, you need a team, okay, which mm. is industry, uh, research development. Also, you need uh, university work together. And that's, that's bridge. I can see it in a lot of places. I cannot even... Uh, you know, if you're working in industry, people just go to industry. Oh, I'm just my comfortable zone is industry. I don't want to go to university and see what they are doing. Industrial people, uh, they, they they also say, oh, I, I'm 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 happy with my student. I'm happy with teaching. I don't want to go to industry. So, like me, I do bridging. I'm looking at said, no, guys, you have to see what is industry, and industry cannot just blindly do whatever for themselves and not looking at in universities. So that's bridging not happening in a lot of places. That's why we lacking in everywhere and in we lacking in Iran too. Thank you, Dr. Shuku. Um, I think it was very concise and informative session. Uh, yes. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> Thank you. you. I think everybody can just remove mute and clap, that's fine. So I just want to ask if anybody has a question, please raise hand and then um, take turn and ask your question. So I have a question. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for very informational and excellent and knowledgeable presentation. So just based on your experience in, the, in this field, I, I'm curious to know what is how do you see or what is the status of Canada in sense of uh, composite manufacturing? <laughs> do we have any? <laughs> so in, in Canada, um, uh, in Canada we have, uh, in Ontario we have some manufacturing but not at the scale of what we look for, like, uh, you know, advanced material. So we have like um, McMaster University and also, also other people, they are doing work on nanocomposite, nanocomposite uh, producing them for like some, not just uh, for industrial like auto or they are working on membrane. But honestly, compared to being Canada, it's not very, um, Satis I, I'm not very satisfied what, what we have, but it still is a slow movement uh, we have a lot of things going on in universities, and we have some a lot of things going on in very small sector that they are doing that. But again, um, the problem is on Canada's economy is is going down as it's going down from 2008. Nobody wants to spend money 
to go ahead with the project or with the research development that we put. So that will was a very bad things happening. And after that, like a couple of years, we got uh, some recovery. There's some research done, but compared to United States, United States is much ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, Germany, um, a lot of uh, like other countries, um, we have very slow progress. The reason is just money. Um, if you like CNRC, I was working with CNRC. Uh, they, what they need, CNRC is my, uh, the biggest research development that, you know, all of this equipment is there and you want to do something when I worked there for four years. But the problem was, is you have to find, okay, a company that spon sponsor you for material, sponsor you for money to, to do like four or five years research and you know, finish the, the, the things, that's not very easy. Uh, it's mostly done by uh, uh, American companies. So you have to go talk to American to give you money to do that. So yeah, it's yep. not very, uh, you know, it's not, uh, not, it's not there, but it's not uh, enough. Sure, makes sense, thank you. No problem. Thank you, Shivash. Um, anybody else has any question? Yes, more. Yes, my name is Monire. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your presentation. It has a lot of information for me. Uh, I have only one question about that. Uh, do you have any experience that this material used in construction, in structure, something like that? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, most of uh, you know the beams, the beams, I beams, um, the ladder. The so is. Uh, we use composite in uh, a lot of uh, structures like building in frames um, and, and pollution is one of the major process we are using. Um, and also um, uh, in uh, for the window, for the uh, structure, for the um, what else, bridges, that's very, um, uh, the, um, the building high, high rise building we, we oh. use this material, the composite, is because it's light. So, yes. and you, the weather, for example, the weather like in Sarnia or here is minus 40. So that's design point of view. We want to make sure the material is um, stand around minus 40. Uh, this is the best thing is using, and if it's corrosive or humid, is the best for use the composite material. And, uh, you know, ceramic is brittle, but if, if I'm outdoor, I'm using something that uh, has uh, exposed to our, we use ceramic composite. If not, we should use metal composite, which is um, the expensive, but has highest uh, strength. Yes, there's a lot of uh, actually construction, um, infrastructure, all <laughs> is, we, is one of the major. Uh, not a lot of pro, you know, it's, it's classic process, but it's not like our aircraft and like NASA is using this a lot. If you go to NASA, they are, they are every day they produce something new. Uh, but uh, this is a classic process for uh, civil people like yourself. <laughs> so there's so many application we have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question? One is, um, Mr. Moakar, do you have any question? No, have <laughs> okay. Yeah. I have some question also. Um, <clears throat> it, it is like each part of that different methodology, like different technology that is being used for uh, composite processing. It, it is very interesting and uh, it's a lot of question to ask actually, but not mm -hmm. at this time. So, but um, generally I wanted to know a few things if a composite material can be uh, used as a, for, for sanitary design, uh, like for example, in pharmaceutical uh, application. That's one of the question I'm- Yes, uh, well, uh, for right now we have for a long time ago in hospitals and um, for, um, yeah, so we have the 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 vessel. Uh, it may not be the right application for you right now, but uh, you know when you burn all of the material that is uh, in from hospitals and 
um, you know, you want to not contaminate any other thing, the vessel itself is made of composite. So you can put them in there and try destroy that material, which is very either, uh, you know, uh, not contaminate anybody, you, the, we are using that. In, um, um, so for, uh, for those, okay, for pharmacy, there's so many other application. For example, the material that the, the, if you are using high temperature, high, uh, especially uh, in um, surface, very good surface and surface and not having, because if it's glassy, is contamination will be less. So you are, you could use the composite to to stand for high temperature and have a kind of very good surface uh, to avoid any cross contamination. Because if you're using in in um, uh, when you make paste in uh, um, in uh, um, uh, in the manufacturing, if if you you know it continuously work, but you need some uh, you need some great change or different uh, drug you make it, if there's a contamination, that will be very bad things. So yeah, there is so many application in, for making the equipment there. So not just uh, making drugs and you know things, but using the equipment specifically for that industry. So uh, the reason is why composite and polymers, same thing is useful for many, even in petrochemical in any other place because it's light. Handling it easy, um, maintenance is easy, and uh, making it is easy than metal. So a lot yeah. of places um, we build polymer plant or we build petrochemical plant. Uh, not right now. We're shifting from using metal. We are using composite. One thing big thing was like last year is you using your, a pipe kind of transition pipe between two reactor, which is very high temperature, like 250 degrees C, and also has very corrosive material. So what you do, you, you, you're you using composite because this is only thing you can make it uh, against high temperature and high corrosion. So any, any alloy you use, first of all, is very heavy and it's not, it's not adjustable to, to be adjustable to the reactor. So this is, uh, yes, there is so many application depending on, uh, the, the first thing is because of the, the characteristic of material. Second thing is because of the can stand against pressure, temperature, uh, and also um, the environment, severe environment. Is it corrosive or any other? So, and then you can you can um, customize it. So basically, yeah. it, that's the things that you cannot do it with uh, metal like aluminum. Aluminum is the one couple of grades that you cannot change it so much, but with composite you can change it dramatically from very low property to very high property. Maybe you spend more money, but it's possible. Yes, uh, this is a uh, very, yeah, this mm -hmm. is very good uh, market for the people. Thank you. No problem. Perfect. Yeah, and then another question was, what is, what do you see the trend in uh, using composite, replacing metals, especially for actually car manufacturing? Yes. Because Sometimes I see um, the safety is compromised um, because you know they, they think they like sometimes I think um, they are using composite to be light um, and maybe saving cost, but uh, on the other side or maybe cro uh, it is like um, to prevent corrosion. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, on the other side, um, and making light for sure. But on the other side, when like they are easier to, you know, for uh, to be <clears throat> in, in, in a car accident, to be uh, for, for car collision or, you know, uh, compromise safety of people. Uh, it is easily like some of them, not all like foldable. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, um, like for example, what they have used in—I don't know if they have used it in Pride, uh, one of our mm, national car. So, what do you think about that? Yeah. What is overall trend? Is yeah, really the overall crazy? trend. Yeah, overall trend is I'm telling you, one day you you see everything made of composite in car. I'm telling you. But so, why not alloy? Um, the reason is, first of all, um, because of the light, you say, and then also, yeah, even alloy has limited um, limitation in the in the um, in the strength in certain temperature, certain like fatigue and all of that. But you can 
always improve compo composite with adding something new to it. So before in the car, like just for, and the reason is you have so many, so many combination. You could you add elastomer to a thermoplastic, you could uh, use that and that has that safety you talk about. When I have elastomer inside the composite uh, is elasticity go up. So it's, it's it, you, you, you now broken. So you are not worried about, okay, metal will broke anyways, brittle, that's right. Mm. But that uh, thermoplastic and elastomer together will never broke is is very um is kind of maybe damaged because of temperature but it's not because of like brittle as as metal is so we have a lot you know a lot of option on composite a lot of option and that's where happening for 50 years ago they start combining to get together thermoplastic elastomer so yeah in my opinion one day as you see 50 percent of the aircraft is made as composite one day most of part of automobile and also the other things in the world like refrigerator and all of the tv everything will go to be composite and the reason is the source of alloy also <laughs> is limited and the the the, the, the property of limited mm. and is expensive they want light because fuel is expensive fuel is going up so the race car race car there is one car that they made it with to totally with composite is so much light that co goes like 500 kilometer per hour so this is this is the reason and it could be safe based of application if don't think about this broken and damaged the the body of the car so there's so many pieces that you can make it from abs you can make it from polycarbonate you can make it from uh, isoprene and together overall you, you, your safety is there. That's what GE is doing. GE is all part of automobile right now is producing it separately by different grade and compounding together. So okay. trend is going to be very high. One day uh, and one day is, is composite and composite has metal too inside. So it's not just polymer as I explained to you, it would. Yeah. Wood is one of the things that will go in the next uh, like 10, 20 years will be everything made as wood and polymer, wood and other things. So uh, depending on where you live, if it's, it's cheap to make it, it's, it's there, so. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Dr. Shoku. Thank you. <clears throat> Dr. Shoku, may I ask you to close the presentation? Sorry? May I ask you to close the presentation? Yes, I, I do. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, let me, uh, on behalf of Board of Directors of Mandis, I would like to take this opportunity and appreciate Dr. Shuku Fatoi for her attractive and informa informative presentation. I would like to also appreciate 